This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily your everyday average run-of-the-mill conservative value views. They're a little bit different on Wednesday nights because Rudy Howard, who is the owner of a Howard Insurance Company and your insurance agent, or at least should be, he is your host for the African-American scene. He does not preach to the choir. And, of course, the lines are open at 340-1590. The host of the show is here right now and ready to roll, ready to rumble. It's Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. I hope you enjoyed uh, the uh, guest I had last week, Tammy Mc McEwen. And we talked about her book, Mind As Well. She's a very dynamic young lady. I encourage you to go download that book off of Amazon. It's a quick read. Uh, I think it's really, really helpful for anyone that feels that they're having some struggles. And this young lady overcome all her struggles and has a bachelor, two master's degrees, and a Ph.D. That's, a, that's quite an accomplishment. Well, I have to tell you. <laughs> the Republican Party dumped Liz Cheney because she told the truth. My God, my God, where are we? Where are we? And then you profess to be Christians. You dump the lady for telling the truth and then swear your allegiance to being a Christian. Hiding behind the faith... To, to propagate lies. That's wow. I it's like I and you know, uh I've had this discussion and and I've had uh somebody call me up and has asked me several times for a meeting and I said, We can't meet. You wanna meet with me as your Christian brother, but you tell lies and you accept lies. How can we have a discussion when you accept lies for reality? And, you know, I, I really sat down and thought about a lot this week as I saw what was happening to Liz, because Liz is about as right as you can get. Matter of fact, I probably disagree with about 90 percent of her policy thoughts, but I don't disagree with her point of view that. If we continue to support the lie, we're encouraging the liar and destroying our democracy. That is undeniable. It is undeniable that we came within a hair's breadth of losing our democracy on January 6th. I mean a hair's breadth. That it was that was really a close call. Somebody could have very easily if that had gone on a little bit longer, there's a strong possibility that people could have been murdered and the government could have been overturned. And we got Winnie on line one. Hi, how, how you doing, Winnie? Pretty good. I have a question to ask you, Rudy. Okay. Okay. About uh, uh, George Floyd, uh, really case and uh, the the big thing. Okay, that guy and what the jury if he lied on the question, may have that light lies matter. Okay, and then I hear hear on the news, TV news, him trying and hit the big team and they up to the they hit that they like lawyers with their glasses, they up to Eric Nelson, anyway. He would try to uh, overturn it. He, he wanted a, re, a new retrial because they got uh, the, 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 the guy lied on his question there. And he was at the rally, uh, being about to see, he had the t shirt, Black Lives Matter, you know, Black Lives Matter, and get to me off the mate, had Dr. King, it's in the, in the center of the t shirt. Well, you think that might work? You think it might be, you know, they're trying to get an overturn or over a new trial? I, I, I think that 
there is probably some teeth to that, but it appears the jury was overwhelmingly in favor of the verdict. So I guess the question would be whether or not the verdict would have been any different had he not been there, and I would say probably not. But I can't say that there is no merit because he did answer the question that he had no connection with with Black Lives Matter, and then they they found a picture where he did have on some uh, paraphernalia regarding that. So I'd say there's... There's an issue to be dealt with, but I don't think it would overturn the verdict. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, uh, Do the judge have to make that decision to say, no, uh, yes? uh, (laughs) Well, what will happen now is the uh, trial attorney will appeal it to the appellate court, and the appellate court will have to decide whether or not it is an appealable issue. If they grant appeal, then there will be a new trial. Uh, okay. Uh, wow, that's that's tough. That. Uh, he has filed some more charges against David uh, civil rights. Yes. Uh, uh, civil rights. And there's another a boy, a black boy, he did uh, very Yes, he did. Yes, he, he did. Filed, he filed charges against him. For that too. Yep, that uh, that uh, came up. They wouldn't let him bring that up at trial, but uh, they they found there has been another lawsuit filed against Chauvin for a seventeen year old that he I kneeled mean, on his neck, but right. that didn't kill him. Right. Uh huh. So he filed. Uh, yes, they did. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, we have been talking. Thank okay. you for asking the question. Sure, Winnie. Anytime. You know that. Uh, okay. Right, okay. Uh, that just leads me right into what my topic was. I have five topics, and you can feel free to chime in on any of them. If this is the first time you've ever listened to my show, this is the way I do it. I throw out topics. I'll come in and do background material on those topics. But you're free to call up and give me your opinion about those topics. Number one, which is just what Winnie called about, was the George Floyd justice, what is the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Okay. What is the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act? There's so much stuff floating around about it. So I dug up the information on what the act comprised of that I that I will share with you because people just lie to you so much. I want to be want to be able to give you the right truth. Uh subject number two. Was the Chauvin guilty verdict proper. Do you agree that Chauvin should have been found guilty for the death of George Floyd? uh, Topic number two. Topic number three. Officer Carol Horn from Buffalo won a jury verdict to get her back pay and her retirement from the Buffalo Police Department. I talked about this before, but I just will let you know what the outcome was. Number four, Texas has passed, has the Texas GOP has passed a bill to stop teachers from talking about racism. They actually put that into law. <laughs> Cliff's looking at me like, what? That's, they actually passed a law to stop teachers from talking about racism or current events in class. Not allowed. I don't think the hatred's coming from the classroom teachers. <laughs> I think it's coming from parents, you know, and elders in the family. <laughs> this night. You know, I, I'm just going to say this. If, if you've w- ever watched a show where 
a person has been changed from being a hatred, a redneck uh, hater and white supremacist, it always revolves around them finding out truth. They learn the truth about other people, the people that they hated, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, why am I doing this anymore? The light comes on at some point, or it, ha- it should anyway. Yeah. At some point, yeah. They, they do- I've, and I've seen several of those shows because I find them interesting when they turn somebody that was a pure hater into somebody that now, uh, and one guy that I looked at recently, he now goes around and tries to help other people get out of the hate groups. But it starts with getting a, another perspective. And finally, I talked about this before, but I don't think I ever got a chance to finish it. The social mobility rankings, the international social mobility rankings, they, the, for the first time, they ranked social mobility uh, between all the countries of the world. And if you want to comment, call in and uh, comment on any of those topics, that's 3401590. That's 3401590. First, let me just say this, because this is a subject that, that we have talked about off and on over the last few years, about protests. How so many of you detest people protesting. And how I have told you in the past, you may not like protesting, but protesting is designed to make you feel uncomfortable, and it oftentimes spearheads change. I am prepared to say, and I'll go on the line with this with anybody, the George Floyd verdict doesn't happen without Black Lives Matter. Just doesn't. The, the George Floyd verdict would not have happened without Black Lives Matter because what Black Lives Matter did is raise the consciousness of the people of this country about issues of race and justice. And there couldn't have been a person possible that would have sat on that jury that was not exposed at some point to Black Lives Matter's marches, Black Lives Matter speeches, and let, let me tell you, uh, Black Lives Matter had a profound effect. There's no doubt in my mind, and I'll argue with anybody who wants to argue with me about it, on the outcome of the George Floyd verdict. And you know why I can say that? If you remember Rodney King, we saw that video with those cops standing around beating the devil out of him, and they got an innocent verdict. But this time it didn't happen. And we got Steve on line one. Yes, sir. Yeah, Rudy, right now we're experiencing a very historic event. Yes. And that is the demise of the Republican Party as we have known it for the last hundred years, basically. Yes. And the new fascist Republican Party is uh, wanting to take power. And I think it's very dangerous, number one, but I think it's going to backfire. Because I don't think mom and pop are going to want to be associated with white supremacists or a bunch of queer landers, or whatever they call themselves. And they're not going to want to give up America. They fought too hard for it. I sure hope so. Well, I'm willing to bet on it. I mean, I'm going to bet my life on it, because you better believe if it don't go that way. Remember, I have combat experience. (laughs) Yeah, hey, Steve, I'm I'm with you, man. I, 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 January 6th, I don't know about the rest of the people. That scared the hell out of me. I would have opened funny. I'm sorry, but you were attacking my capital yes. while my government was in session, governing my country, and you were forcefully and deadly 
taking over the building, trying to stop, and you did stop the process, believe me, there would have been 18 wheelers there, freezer trucks, taking the bodies away. Because that is an all-out seditious attack on our government. Yes. Amen. Let anybody, I'll go to court on anybody on that one. Well, let me tell you but something. You know what? I I, 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 this, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I, I would go to war on that. I would go. I would, I would go to war for doing that. No, I'd go to war, and it wouldn't matter. matter and, old, and, and, and it, it wouldn't old, matter uh, me if, if if a Democrat was to do that. I'd feel the same way. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But you know, I mean. It amazes me that these Hitler wannabes and all this would even think that way if they look in their own family history. How many of their family died in World War II? Yes. Because of Nazism and, and this suprem white supremacy and all that Aryan nation garbage. Uh, you know, God didn't make us all of our parts are interchangeable for no reason. That's right. That's right. One people. But and you, you, and you know what? To I, stop I, these nuts. I was thinking about it today before I came on to do the show. And you know where I kind of see the start of this? With Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin came out and she's talked all that nonsense. And she was one of the first ones that got some of those people up out of the holes and out of the cracks of the walls to come out and be visible. Okay, but can I give you a little answer to that? Sure. I put a big dose of the blame right square on the media because the media said, oh, here's a nut job, and we can uh, get viewers <laughs> if we just, uh, you know, exploit this. Ratings, Instead yeah. of coming down on our heart and saying, listen, this is a – you know, seal gone wild or whatever. Yeah. She's a nut job. And America doesn't need a nut job. It needs stability. But they didn't. They made a story out of it. Now, I know they want ratings, but you're not even going to have a show if this isn't a free America. That's right. So don't worry about ratings under another system. You won't have a show. But this has got to stop. And there's only about, like they said, five Republican senators who are really hardcore, and the rest of them are going to have a hard time explaining in the next election cycle, some bunch of Republicans are up in the Senate. Why did you vote against the pandemic, number one? Why did you vote against the, the suppression of voters? You know, you want suppression of voters? So, I mean, what are you? You're not an American because the Constitution is pretty clear. You have the right to do to vote. Yeah. You have the right to protest. And how else would you get your message across? Well, they they but they <laughs> they they have all kind of fancy excuses for why they do this. Okay. I just pray to God, I I'm going to believe what you believe that our people are smarter than we give them credit for and they'll be able to see right through this. Well, I want to tell you, you remember the silent majority? Oh, I talk about well, it all the time. We're still here. Yeah. We're still here. But we're still silent. Yeah. This is the nut minority that you're seeing out there. Yeah. They haven't felt the wrath of the silent majority yet. But when we feel threatened, or our families are threatened, believe me, we're going to turn out in numbers. And those people are going to go, uh, you may have picked the wrong side. Yeah. Thank you, my you friend. Know, always pleasure. All right. You take care. All Stay right. well. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. I got a little he's, he's right. different take. Uh, people say black lives matter, which they do. Other people say blue lives matter. I say the lives that truly matter on this earth are the ones when they bleed, they bleed red. That's what, And there's two major colors involved here. Red, for the we all bleed the same color. And then everything else is all about green. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. This is all about green, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk a little bit about this uh, George Floyd Justice Act, which is, uh, is which is HR seven one two zero. 
one of the things it talks about is how police handle prisoners makes it clear, makes it easier to sexually sue abusive officers and cut police departments off from the supply of military-grade equipment that they say they need to be safe. Uh, The other thing with the act, the bill requires all law officers to undergo training on racial, religious, and discriminatory profiling for all law enforcement. The law requires deadly force used only as a last resort and requires officers to employ de-escalation techniques first. Then it also would limit local police departments' access to military-grade equipment that protesters say increase tensions during demonstrations. And finally, uh, eliminating qualified immunity for police officers, which that is the sticking point um, to the overall bill. But there you have it. And we got Jay on line one. Yes, Jay. How you doing, man? Good afternoon. Uh, I just want to continue with what you were just talking about, you and the, and the last guest. Uh, I just heard, you know, I was just so glad to hear that, they, uh, that they're thinking about it. And Pelosi brought it up today. I didn't hear, you know, we're just, oh, you know, three months gone by, and they're not even talking about, like they had a 9-11 commission to bring this to the floor and, and, and also bring up, you know, have a, you know, have like a, a committee, a commission to look into what happened on January the 6th to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, uh, they can do that, but they won't get any cooperation from uh, the, the, from the Republicans in the House and in the Senate, and that's going to be the drawback on that. And that, that's because they don't want to talk about uh, January the 6th. They, they try to avoid it. It's, it's kind of sad watching it, man. It's like watching, you know, kids when they steal something and, or they take something and they, you ask them about it, say, I don't know what you're talking about. They have the, you know, the guilt is on their face every time they get to get before the TV camera. And like you said, the media does, are not really doing their job because they think it's both sides. You know, well, the Democrats do this. It's not. This is all on. This is all on 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 the Republicans in the House for what they did today to, to uh, Congresswoman Cheney, and I'm just so happy that she's going to be sticking around and keep putting it into putting it to them. And I think she should be the one. She should be going along with. I think she will be uh, with the uh, with 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 the uh, first with the Congress and Nancy Pelosi for this not you know the similar 9/11 Commission. Because that's what they need. They need to get some prominent Democrats and Republicans, even if they have to get the ones out, out of retirement, to come and to sit on that commission, to get to the bottom of it and make sure it doesn't happen again, and prosecute, prosecute everybody that was connected with it, whether they're a senator, whether they're a, a congressman, or whatever their title is. You know, even those, uh, those other characters that were ramming through, because it was all orchestrated and it was all programmed. And they're planned months before uh, January the 6th. And that, that's the sad part about it. They're not talking about that. And I was so glad that uh, Garland, the, the, the AG, came out with that uh, domestic terrorism is, 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 is the worst thing going on. They committed more crimes than uh, foreign terrorists ever did in this Ab- country. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of the worst killings in America yeah. was domestically. Remember Timothy, Timothy McVeigh? Timothy McVeigh, yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah, and it goes on after McVeigh. You know, they, there was a lot of things going on, and they, they really couldn't do anything because they didn't make it, they didn't have it at the same priority as foreign uh, uh, terrorists. So now they just did that today. I think the AG uh, made it, uh, the, you know, domestic and extremist terrorism is a crime. Oh, and they're going to you know, treat them that way. I heard that good. today. Oh, good. That's great. I've Because I understood it. The same way you did. They have never, I heard several FBI people say, they just have never given that any serious consideration to yeah. move up the ladder as far as seriousness is concerned, which yeah, is hard to believe. To. Yeah. Yeah, he did it. He, he seems to be on the right track. And we, I'm glad that we got, a, we got somebody, we got an adult in the AG office this time. So we got to make oh. sure that we support him. And I just wanted to get that little tidbit, and that's about it. Uh, Thank you, sir. Always, always a pleasure to have you call.
Take care. You too. Okay. Um, like I said, uh, do you think Chauvin should have been found guilty for the death of George Floyd? If you have an opinion on that, three four zero one five nine zero. Well, the jury did uh, did not acquit him like uh, some of the other officers that have been charged in uh, these type of uh, activities. And uh, what's really cool, though, is is folks don't have to just go by what the jury said or, or the outcome because you got an opinion out there too. And if you want to talk about it, you know, you can go ahead and do so here. You sure can. Yeah. You sure can. That's why I put it out there. You're still entitled. Hey, you're entitled to disagree with the jury verdict. I can tell you for sure. When they found those men not guilty in the Rodney King beating, my mouth fell down to the floor. Oh, yeah. When, After you see in the video. Right. You see the video, and how could they not, you know, pass uh, justice on this? Right. When I watched... Uh, Garrett in New York get choked to death by six police officers surrounding him. Why you have him in a chokehold like that? He's a big guy, but he's down. And I watched him lose his life. I was stunned and, and heartbroken that there was no justice for his family. You know, so it, you're entitled to disagree if you'd like. Now, here's the next contention that's coming up. Do you think those officers that were with Chauvin, who stood there while he snuffed out George Floyd's life, should be charged for a crime? You know what I've always said? A good cop won't just watch something bad happen. A good cop will... In intervene and do something about it a good cop that doesn't intervene is not a good cop it's a bad cop just like any other bad cop but it's what it, we call it an accomplice in the prosecution world right it's an yeah. accomplice there in my mind there would have been no reason why one of his buddies couldn't have tapped him on the shoulder and say come on we can't do that Come on, come on. Come on, Joven. You had enough. That's enough. He's already in cuffs. He's already down on his belly on his face. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. If you didn't do that, then shame on you. And I feel I feel no remorse for what comes your way. I don't care if you are a trainee or not. You're still a human being. Yeah. One, of the, one of the allegations is one of the guys was a trainee, so he was afraid to say anything about it, but... Come on, you could still say, all you have to do is just say something. Uh, Chauvin, come on, man. Don't you think that's enough or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so what do you think? Should they be convicted of a crime? Now, and then my next subject. So now I'm asking whether you think Chauvin is guilty, as, as was guilty as they found. And now we're next going to go to the three officers that were with him, with him, and what's your thoughts about that? Now let me share this with you, and this is a subject I brought up. Oh, I guess it was maybe two months ago. Carol Horn, a police officer in Buffalo, with a spotless record. She had about 19 years in the department. Was thrown off the police force for stopping a police officer from choking a black man in handcuffs. And I have since seen an interview with him, and he said, point blank, if she didn't stop him, I would be dead. But they found... Now, this happened to her in 2006. So, in 2006, she was kicked off the force, lost her pension, lost her pay, but there is justice. And again, I'm going to say this, 
you don't like this, that I'm going to say this. And I know one person in particular who might be listening who is turning red fired mad for me saying this. That doesn't happen without Black Lives Matter. Just doesn't happen. Everybody's consciousness level has been raised. All those marches in the street, whether you liked them or didn't like them, it went into your subconscious about how treatment of black men. It is in your conscience now, whether you like it or not. And there's no age matter on this. (laughs) Exactly. So here she gets, now she gets the verdict, and the judge mentions Black Lives Matter in the verdict. I threw out that paper. But he actually mentions Black Lives Matter in, in his verdict. She gets her pay from 2006 to 2010. Oh, wow. And then she gets her pension. Wow. What a little boost to go with a pension. Yes. That and, ought to get their attention. <laughs> and he said in his verdict, we can't undo, this is exactly what he said, I just remembered it. We can't undo the injustice that was done to George Floyd, but we can undo the injustice that was done to you. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, and they did. And, and every every law enforcement agency in the world needs to take a look at that, you know, because that's uh, that's something uh, inevitable that they might have to face should they not do some kind of a, a deeper source, a deeper form of uh, background checking and psychological profiling and everything. They need to really be able to look into a person's past and some of their belief systems and some of the people they've hung out with. What, what happens from what I see and from some of my retired police officer friends, I have quite a few retired police officer friends, and some of them tell me that what happens is you give somebody a badge and a gun, and, you know, uh, their ego gets blown out of proportion. Like back in the school days, a hall monitor. Yeah. The, the, the tattletale kid that gets put in charge of the classroom while the teacher leaves for a few minutes. Yes. It's the same thing. It's a power grab. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so now you put, and then sometimes, uh, I, I will say, I won't, I won't, could never say his name because he would get in trouble. But he's told, he, he once said to me, Many of the guys that get that gun and badge are guys that got bullied in high school. And now they're police officers. Yeah. And well, now you... Woe to anybody who reminds them of those bullies. Yes. And yeah. you have to do what they say. And it really becomes a... Too often it becomes an ego contest. Yeah. yeah. Of, I told you to do that. Why aren't you doing that as fast as I told you to do it? You know, like your uh, mother or father might say when you was a kid. I, I told you to go over there. Why aren't you over there right now when I tell you? You know, and you're dealing with grown folks. So, but that's that's what I've been told by police officers in candor. That, uh, and then, like, I, I know one guy in particular who is on... Uh, the Fort Pierce Police Department, his name will go unmentioned, and he told me that there's times he gets calls and he goes and does the calls by himself when he shouldn't. And he said, because if I call somebody in, they just blow the whole situation completely out of proportion. And he said, I know I take a chance doing that, but he said, it just happened to me too many times and if if I can gauge what kind of call it is a lot of times I just do it by myself wow you know think about that he just knows he knows that if he goes and calls somebody to go back him up it's likely to get out of out of control that's like uh the the one lady uh had a was having a 
she had a relative that was having a uh, uh, mental episode, and she called the police department. And the lady on the phone was a sweetheart. She said, you don't want us to come out there. And she said, well, I, he's, he's really acting up. She said, you, ma'am, you don't want us to come out there. Call somebody else or take him to the hospital. Don't, don't have us come out there. And so the lady listened. She didn't have them come out there. But now that was just a, a good Samaritan answered the phone, uh, 911 operator, and she said, don't come, no, don't let us come out there. She knew it was just not going to be good, or she yeah. knew the people that covered that territory, is, it probably is that she knew the people that covered that territory, and that was not a good fit for the situation at hand. Wow. So I don't know, but it, it, it's... Uh, I, I I finally think, after many, 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 many years of this going on, I think there's a change. I really do. I think there's a change. It's in progress. Yes. It's definitely in progress. Yes. It's beyond where you could say it's coming, because it's already practically here. Yes. We've just... Uh, well, there's still the sentencing to come uh, in, in the George uh, uh, case, George, George Floyd. So when that verdict comes out and the sentencing, well, the verdict's out, but the sentencing is going to either shake people up or, or make them angry. But uh, chances are, I think a lot of folks are, will be happy about this because it's been a long time. We've waited a long time to see this. Yes. It's a long yes. time. And uh, now there was another officer who had a, an appeal and lost it because, uh, well, the George Floyd uh, verdicts kind of encouraged, I guess, judges and juries all over the country. Well, like I said, Finally. like I said, there's no doubt in my mind that Black Lives Matter raised the consciousness level of people all over the country. And people who were not initially inclined to be concerned about justice and people, black and brown people, all of a sudden, there was so much. It was on the TV every night. It's like unconscious uh, information being beamed at you all the time that it gets into your consciousness. And, and people, I think most people, the vast majority of people, when given the correct information, will make a fair and equitable decision. Almost always, when people are, when people are given the proper information, they will make a just decision. So I think that's where we are. Unusual now. Yeah. We have a we lady have a lady. Yeah. I love it. Phyllis, how are you? Hello, Phyllis. How are you? Yeah, hi, Rudy. I called you once before. Remember, I don't know if you remember about um, racism on both sides and the slavery. It was about the slavery, you know, that the blacks had slaves too, way back when. And the violence in the streets is uncalled for. Yeah. You're trying to make a point. So my question to you this time is, I understand. Uh, okay, so like he was convicted on all three counts, which I'm not an attorney. I don't know about all three. He didn't. T he killed the guy. Yes, maybe, maybe not. They're talking about the drugs. Who knows? Who's ever going to know? But three charges, like he intentionally murdered him. He didn't intentionally murder anybody. I mean, everybody's saying, you know, you get caught up in, in, in the moment, like eight, eight minutes or whatever. I'm sure it goes by pretty fast when you're in a situation. I don't know. But all I do know is you're like putting Black Lives Matter on a pedestal. And no. I think they're the biggest part of the problem because... Why don't we have now in the cities and the people that are afraid and the people are afraid to say anything because they're being threatened and the violence that's going on and the cops that are getting killed today, innocent cops just being killed because they're cops, I feel Black Lives Matter. And that's how I feel. And I also feel Black Lives Matter should have stood up when that other cop, what was he supposed to do when the girl was shot, the 16-year-old? 
You remember that case just happened yeah. like two weeks ago. Yes, I remember. That poor guy, that poor guy, what was he supposed to do? If he didn't shoot that girl, it would have been, the, the headlines would have been, he didn't care because it was two black girls. So he didn't care who killed who. Nope. That's, so not, that's, that's, not, that's not how I saw that. I'm not saying how you saw it, but I'm saying that's how the media would have reported it. Yeah, but I'm just telling you, honest, I, I, I saw the whole video of how that happened. And I would say this, and you're going to be surprised. In deference to the, the situation at the moment, I'm not going to give fault to him for making that decision. I question his judgment, but I won't find fault with him making the decision. Now, let me tell you why I question his judgment. If you see the video... There are two parents standing right next to where the two girls are. Okay? From the time he arrives on the scene until the time he shoots her, that's a very short time frame. He didn't get a real chance to assess the situation. He just decided it was out of control and shot her. With the two, well, 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 wait, wait, because the two parents were there standing right there next to where the girls were. That okay. would have, that would have gave me pause. Because the adult was standing there doing nothing? Well, we don't know what the adult was doing because we didn't have a chance to engage them. But you need to look at that video again because that girl had a hand up and I saw him and I was t- gonna plunge into the other girl. I so saw, what was he to do at that point? I saw I saw the video clearly. I listen. I told you. I I'm not. I I don't think. I can say he was wrong, but I question his judgment. I think that's fair as I can be. I don't think I could be any fairer than that. I I don't think he well, should. Well, I don't think. I, he, I don't think. You, want, and you know, and, and people seem, seem to forget. You got an eighth of a second to make up your mind. What do I do? Or stay and watch her stab her? Or do I stop the stabbing? And do you know she's 16 years old? No. You just see somebody with a knife and go to stab some other girl. So what do you do in that situation? Do you wait and see what happens? And then what are you called? Then you're a racist because you didn't care because both girls were black. No. I mean, the whole, I mean everybody's putting these cops like, you think they got like all day to make decisions. And, and, the, and the cops are getting killed now for no reason. People shooting up back, back in the head, whatever, just for the fact that they're cops. Where's the hate coming from? Black Lives Matter has a role in that. They have a huge role in no, that. No, 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 no. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not putting Black Lives Matter on a pedestal. What I'm saying, Phyllis, is Black Lives Matter raised the consciousness level of the people in this country so that more black and brown people could get fair justice. Now, the people like you who hate Black Lives Matter just because of what they stand for. But it is what I'm going to tell you is this. And I said this to a friend of mine, and he went back and checked and came back and said to me, you're right. Last summer, as Black Lives Matter marches were going on, they got whiter and whiter. There was, by the end of the summer, there was a lot of white people in Black Lives Matter marches because those people had seen what happened as injustice. Okay, but, but how was it reported? It was reported that they were, they were white supremacists. That's how it was reported. They weren't just white people taking the course of black people. But the point is, there's a lot of people that feel that way. And, and I do too. There's injustice. But there's injustice on both sides. And it needs to be reported on both sides. And it never is. It never is. It's only a black matter. There's white matters too. All the white people getting killed by cops. Put it out there. So the black people feel like we're not the only ones being killed by cops. Maybe that would help. Do you think do you think that there's injustice for white people to get killed by cops? Justice or injustice? Injustice. Yeah. I mean same thing as for black people. I mean it goes both ways. Uh, well, 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 cop, you got a road cop. But you don't have I you know, I saw a video a couple weeks ago. I, I wish that you were on Facebook that I would send you where the cops pulled over a white guy. And they told him to get out of his car. And he got out of his car, and he wrestled with the cop. 
He took the nightstick from the cop and hit him with it. His partner, who was a woman, jumped on his back and he threw her off. He jumped up and got in the cop's car and drove away. They never tased him. They never shot him. Nothing. I'm, look, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, that there's injustice on both sides. But why don't they show the videos when it doesn't go like that? How about the one where the three guys walk out of a convenience store because there was a report of a robbery? There happened to be two cousins and a friend coming out of the convenience store. Just so happened to go in the convenience store that had nothing to do with a robbery. But the cop doesn't know that. He sees the guy coming out, the three of them are walking out, and the one guy sticks his hand in his pocket to get his keys, and he shot him. All right? He thinks he's reaching for a gun. Why does that make the media news? Should I was a black cop shooting a white guy? That's what happened? Well, I'm, sh I'm I'm sure the white the black guy was disciplined. City? I'm sure we march and destroy the city. That's my problem. This this destruction of the cities and look at New York City right now. It's deplorable. It's it's horrendous. It has to stop. And the people who make to stand back and allow this to happen. No, I'm sorry. I don't care if you're white or black. You should be in jail, and it shouldn't be a a, a carousel where you walk right back out the door. That's the problem for now. They got, a rid they got rid of the bail because it says it's not fair to the black population, and now it's just a joke. Why they arrest them, and they're on the street. Arrest them, and they're on the street. What's, why bother? Why bother? Uh, what kind of deterrent is that? So they're walking around, and they're just... They, they, did you see the guy with the, with the brick beating that poor Asian woman? Did you see that? I did. What, where's, where's, so now should the Asian people destroy the city? That's my point. This has to stop. I don't care what color you are, what race you are. This is ludicrous. I, I, listen. Just like Martin Luther King. He, he marched in peace. Now we don't march in peace. We destroy. Whites and blacks together are destroying this country together. And everybody thinks it's okay. Stand back. Let them get them out of their system. I'm sorry. I pay taxes. I want my establishment protected. That's what I pay my taxes for. I have to watch as my place is burned down, destroyed, and these people that want justice are running out with TVs and Rolex watches and clothes. What is that? What, what message does that send? I don't understand that. Does that say, "Oh, we're upset"? Uh, I don't know. Well, well, I'm supposed Phyllis, to well, you here, Here's what no. we have to. Here's what we have to to say about that. Is that representative of the entire group that is protesting at the time, or is that a sliver of the people? Like, you know, did all white people invade the Capitol on January 6th? No, they made a Did So sh should, I, should I hold all white people accountable for what happened on January 6th? No, but nobody believes there was, there was any, there was a rumor that there was people from um, the other groups there starting problems. But they, who's they, ever going to know? But, but we know but that no. that's not true people responsible no we should not throw, that's what i'm saying to you you can't throw everybody into the same category okay. well that's the point i'm making the whole point of this show that's what they're doing <laughs> but, but no that's so this got to stop and, and then the politicians are not raising a problem with this they're like okay well you know no you you are citing the bible you are allowing it to go on because you are not taking a stand about this to stop like what's the name from california when they make Oh, they're, they're, those are nice people. No, they're not nice people. They're murderers. I'm sending mixed messages. Well, are you talking about? Uh, um, I can't think Pelosi. of Pelosi. Huh? Pelosi. Pelosi. Pelosi? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you talking about Pelosi? So, so what did Pelosi? <laughs> do? So what did Pelosi do? See, see, here's part of the problem. Here's part of the problem, Phyllis. And uh, I'm proud to say that I don't do this. You uh, are, I think, now you can correct me if I'm wrong, unfortunately there's too many people that are conservatives or Republicans that think that anybody that's a Democrat is one step away from the devil in hell. <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter talking to them, it's just that if they say they're a Democrat, they're evil and they're not worthy of living. Uh, that's, 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 in, that's insane. No, I, I don't feel that way. I, I'm telling you right now, I'm an independent voter because I don't like either party. And I'll be truthful with you. They just, to me, they're lining their pockets for the lobbyists. They're making a lot of money. They all leave rich. And they all say what needs to be said at the time they need to say it. They speak to one group one way and another group another way. And I'm really tired of it. And that's why I'm an independent. 
and I don't like either party. Because mm-hmm. you know what? You need to stand up for what you believe and stop selling different stuff to different groups. That's how I feel. Okay. And, uh, and then both parties do the same thing. you got to seek and, and find it, the truth, too. And, and, and it's, right? it's got to stop. It, this, is, this is crazy. And like I said, do I hate black lives? No, I don't hate black lives. But what I'm saying to you is they need to be put down when they do stupid things and incite violence. Especially they they like, are. They are put team, down. They, no. they are put down when they do stupid things. But a lot of times no. the things that were done were not done by Black Lives Matter people. What, in the, the, the destroying the cities and stuff? Some of them was not by Black Lives Matter people at all. No, but a lot of them were. They're behind a lot of this that's going... No, no, they're stuff. not. They're not. There are people it's that... It's about Maxine... Ma- Maxine Waters? It's about that woman's... Out of that woman's mouth? Yeah, but Maxine, Maxine Waters is a very uh, uh, boisterous... And demonstrative person when it comes to things that she believes in, but can you? Oh well, yeah, no. But I'm saying she, but she, how she spews off. I don't accept. I, I think that's that's ridiculous, and, and people just think that's okay because it's a Democrat that's saying it. I don't care if you're Republican. Okay, well, I will have to say, Phyllis, I am so grateful that you called. I love it when ladies call my show. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry to be passionate about it. I just, I can't see the... Don't, don't be sorry. sorry. Don't be and sorry. The, oh, and all this loitering. Well, we... I mean, it's got to stop. And the copying case, so, because if you say blue lives matter, well, 20 years ago, they got shot. So all lives, she says all lives matter. Yeah. I mean, what, no, they don't put that out on the news. Nobody knows that. But, well, you call You know me. what I'm saying? It's just... It's, the media has to report everything that's going on, not just one side. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. You're welcome. I enjoy your show. Yeah, thank you. You call again. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. Unfortunately, though, we're all out of time for more calls. We could go yeah. out all night with this. Yeah. We had another caller. Yeah, he, Caller, uh, so whoever was, you were, uh, call in next week. That's right. And also, uh, when, you, uh, when you see the video on YouTube... There's a place down below where you can comment on it, on Facebook. Not Facebook, wherever. Well, we could put it on Facebook, but it, it's going to YouTube. It'll be a video. And it'll be this show. So uh, when you uh, like and comment and subscribe, we'll be grateful, won't we, Rudy? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So I want to say to all of you, thank you, God bless, and be safe. And I will see you next Wednesday right here for the African-American scene. Yeah, the African-American scene with Rudy Howard is presented each week by Howard Insurance of Port St. Lucie. Listen in every Wednesday night in the 6 p.m. hour. And then watch the archives, the videos of these shows on YouTube. To get there, the fastest way to get there. Some people go to YouTube and then look for WPSL TV. But you can also go to YouTube through WPSLTV.com takes you directly to our YouTube presence right there. So enjoy it. And uh, thank you for joining the African American team with Rudy Howard. Call him at, uh, at uh, Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie during the week where he'll be glad to go over your insurance needs with you. Yeah. And this is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast and webcaster to the world. This has been the African American scene with Rudy Howard. And the time right now, 7 o'clock. WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast.